Welcome back to our channel ladies and gentlemen wherever you are watching us from I hope and believe that this video finds you well The decision by Raila Molo Dinga to suspend the demonstrations against Ruto's government is one that continues to elicit a lot of debate with one school of thought saying that it was a good thing to give dialogue a chance because we really need peace in our country for the sake of development but there is another school of thought that feels that Raila made a mistake that he should have continued to heighten the political temperatures because he is the one who had said that his votes were stolen and that he would hear nothing but to get back his victory but i want to submit to you that this decision is a double edged sword it can bite both sides and i want us to look at the pros and cons of uh, raila's decision and his move because personally from where i sit i believe that raila is a seasoned politician he's got a wealth of experience in politics he slips politics its politics is been there during the second liberation when he says that they rooted out the nyayo era one of the things that works for raila molo dinga when he suspends the demonstrations is the fact that he is now giving people time to understand ruto's real character because when raila called for the demonstrations the kenya kwanza team accused him of a man who is playing cheap politics and someone who is only hellbent to toppling what they call a legitimate government that was elected by the people but you you've seen that they are introducing some unpopular laws they want to increase taxes and in all quarters around our nation people have started feeling the pain of these high taxes in less than a week the prices of the basic commodities continues to skyrocket the price of unga has not reduced even though william ruto had promised that in the next few weeks we would see a reduction of the price of unga but nothing of the sort is happening the price of sugar has increased by 100 shillings within one week a kg of uh, sugar was uh, retailing at about 100 to 150 now it is 200 to 250 and the more this happens people continue to feel the burden and they will decide for themselves that indeed what Raila was doing was for the benefit of the common man we will also continue to see cases of corruption like it happened in Kemsa and people will soon realize that this government does not mean good to them and so the advantage here is they will start you know encouraging raila to go back to the streets and when they themselves decide that they want to go to the streets to compel the government to lower the cost of living it will be much easier than when certain quarters still feel that uh, maybe raila is just playing politics and let me tell you something A hungry man is a very angry man. And you will you you realize that demonstrations and rebellion will emanate from Central and Rift Valley which largely voted for William Samoei Ruto. So when Raila calls off and suspends the demonstrations, maybe he's looking at that so that it will reach a time when everyone will go out there for Unga revolution because the cost of uh, education has just become so high. when it is in the university or high school it is just too high and manageable and this will be an advantage if the people now decide that we want to go out there with or without Raila Molo Dinga number 2 there are leaders who still were never decided i remember people like Anwar Iguru still felt that this is a government that they must support but on two occasions i have seen them giving ultimatums to the national government because the government cannot release the county funds and they had even given a notice that if they are not given the money if they don't receive money from the national government 
then the services within the county levels will shut down. They, were, they are unable to run the counties. They can't pay their workers on time. There are levies that are being leveled on them for late payments, bills like electricity and water bills. And they've also started talking about one man, one shilling, one vote, meaning that their eyes are being opened. So governors who used to criticize these demonstrations will join in the fullness of time to compel the government to release money to the county. So each and every person will have a reason to go to the streets. And this can only happen if Raila sits back, allows the people to feel the pain, then they will understand what is happening. There are other groups like doctors and teachers. Doctors have given uh, a notice, a strike notice. And so when Raila sits back, when he finally calls you know, for the demonstrations, these groups must just come up. You might see the university students coming up together with doctors and teachers, all quarters, coming up to paralyze the operations so that the government can understand what it means. And I think on that note, he's right on suspending this demonstration. It was a clever move. But if you, on, on the other flip side, if you look at the other side of the coin, as I said earlier, this is a double-edged sword and it can bite either way. And one of the things that it does is that, number one, the momentum with which people had started the demonstrations and what they had in mind was that they wanted to take back their victory because Raila had told them that that whistleblower gave them the true results, that Raila had 8 million votes against Ruto's 5 million votes. And they were ready. Remember, at some point they were asking Raila, when are we going to State House? But I think Raila knew that uh, it comes with a lot of challenges. And that's why he shunned them against going to State House. So that momentum is soon dying. It also gives room for speculations with others saying that Raila is being compromised. Some are even saying that he never wanted the presidents even the first place. And remember, this has also come with a, a lot of pressure. With people like Babu Winnie, the Embakasi East MP, saying that this was a long con. And the former national agent, the Azumi national agent, Le, uh, Le Kanchori, saying that when William Ruto and the Kanyakwanza team were planning to rig the elections, the Azumi sat back and watched. They were never prepared for the rigging. Otherwise, they, sh they should have averted it because, as I analyzed earlier, Uhuru Kenyatta was the commander in chief of all the armed forces. He should have used every mechanism to stop all this. So it comes with the, all those allegations, and the momentum will soon die. When the momentum dies and people feel that maybe you've been compromised, it makes it very difficult because Raila's soldiers have always been the people. When Raila says, Let us meet in Uhuru Park, they will throw Uhuru Park without being ferried using buses. Number two, the disadvantage of calling off these demonstrations is that it gives William Ruto time to reorganize himself, to rejuvenate himself, to resuscitate himself. You will all agree with me that William Ruto is emaciated. I'm a Konda Kabisa. When people say that he's sick, I have a different opinion. The sickness that is eating him is the pressure of running a government that he was never prepared for. He said he had a plan, but the plans are not working. He is trying to please the international community, at the same time trying to please the hustlers. And it does not work. You must choose one. You can't serve two masters. And that is why you see more taxes, prices of basic commodities. He has abandoned all the subsidies and so whether it is UNGA or electricity or school fees, everything has gone high. And being in that position with the, the situation where he is in Lazima Utakonda. And this will give him time to rejuvenate himself. He will be able to fix a few things. For example, if you give William Ruto more time, he will be able to put structures within the police, structures within the military, structures within several offices. Remember, he inherited a system that was uh, 
overwhelm a system that had been infiltrated by Uhuru powers. Uhuru had been there for over 10 years. And for him to, to, to break the links and, and, and under this system, he needs time. You know, William Ruto was just a few years into the office. And if the momentum had gone a notch higher, sometimes it would, be, it, would, it would have been very easy to force him to vacate or people can negotiate to go back to the ballot. Because Raila had said that we need to open the server. And that was the running call. That was the, the only thing that he should have moved forward with because people are very ready. If you look, even if you talk to Azimu supporters, they will tell you that they were ready to take back their victory, nothing else. And I have not seen anyone from the Azimu government, from the Kenya Kwanza government, refuting the, the whistleblower result. No one is supposing or saying that the whistleblower was wrong. So if, Ra if Raila sits back, suspends these demonstrations, then we've had cases of uh, Jose Kabab in the country and trying to interfere with the servers. Why? Because we give them a lot of time. He will have to fix the IEBC by himself so that when Raila comes back, everything will be in place and he will be even much more ready to deal with the Azimio government, to, will, to deal with Raila Molodinga. William Ruto had been cornered, if you ask me. They were losing billions of shillings every time Azimio went on for demonstrations. And in, since time immemorial, the only language that governments will understand is the language of demonstration. That is why in 1982, there were attempted coup because there were no freedom of picketing at demonstrations. So when you narrow in options, people think of toppling a government. But this time round, the only way to topple a government is to demonstrate demand for your rights because you have it entrenched into the constitution. And when the Zemir supporters demanded that we want to you now increase the number of days for demonstrations from one day in a week to two days in a week, we thought that Maybe the next move was to increase it to three days in a week or four days. But this did not happen. And with this, ladies and gentlemen, let me assure you that if Raila is not careful, the other side of the sword will, will bite him. Because if William Ruto plays his cards well, then Raila is giving him a second term in office. Because the more we go, people will lose that hope. And we will find ourselves. Because what I see happening here is they are now going to the root of amending the constitution. The Utiendi Amolo group, the bipartisan talks, are not interested in the demonstrations. They want to look at the nitty gritties on what to change and know what not to change. But William Ruto will never agree because things like opening the server is becoming a tall order. And so we are giving William Ruto an undue advantage. And Raleigh will be seen as a man who is petty. Because you take people to the streets, then you retreat. And this is something that some people have complained that if you know you want to retreat, do not even take people there in the first place. So this is a double-edged sword, ladies and gentlemen. But one thing I must say, maybe Raila knows what he wants. But William Butu is not sleeping. He's also watching, fixing a few things and there. And so Raila should be much more cautious even as he makes his moves, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what you think, but that is my take.